I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll. Alderman Rampasoon. Here. Alderman Tobin. Absent. Kleiner. Here. Johnson. Here. Jean Francois. Here. Burr. Here. Green. Here. Massey. Here. President Rodriguez. Absent. All right, before we go into any other business, uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Thank you for going out of turn. Uh, today, um, we're here as a community, as a city, and as a downtown business community to honor the number seven best hot dog joint in America. So. Uh, Chino, um, as you know, is uh, also known as the Holy Dog Guy. Uh, Money Magazine rated uh, them number seven in their July 8th edition of Time Money Magazine, which is a, a pretty large pop, uh, publication. So on behalf of the Bid District and the City of Middletown, we have a little something that we'd like to recognize um, the accomplishments of the Holy Dog. And Maria, do you have it? And if I can ask Chino, and if your family wants to come up, and, and the guy that you first met with, John Degnan, if he can yes, come up absolutely. here. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And we want, you don't want to come up? Oh. Come on, get up here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just read it first, and then we'll present it. How's that? Yeah. Basically, what it is, it's a, uh, it's a plaque with the article, and then it has a couple of things created by the bid district, presented by the city of Milltown, and and recognition of this great accomplishment. So we wanted to have John present it to Chino, right here. Trust me, you're gonna have to buy another one. <coughs> right, right. And present it to him on behalf of, you know, we're, we're um, I, I remember when you opened, and not only have you brought excellent food to the downtown area, but you're quite a character. And, <laughs> and we, yeah, so we welcome you to downtown many years ago. We thank you for bringing some notoriety to our city built thank town, you. to our downtown. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Located right across the street from the police station. We can do a little plug too. Well, you've been busy enough, you know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You want to say a few words? Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you very much to, to the entire community and uh, for having a city with the welcome people, the, the coming to start a new life over here. Thank you. Well Thank you. said. Well said. All right, Mayor. That's it for tonight for you. That's correct, <laughs> Mr. Massey. Approval of minutes. Nothing this evening. Correspondence. We have a check here from the Middletown Lions Club to the Middletown Police Department in the amount of $100 for the Cops and Kids program. Received and filed. We have a 30-day waiver for Gino's Luncheonette, 180 Monhagen Avenue. And that's uh, turned over to the Police Department and... Alex. Alex. Corporation Council, Alex. We have correspondence from Eggs and Marketing for the... Uh, Humane Society on the inspection report, satisfactory. Received and filed. We have correspondence from Marlena Lang uh, regarding uh, support responsible pet ownership. And we'll turn that over to Dr. Johnson's legislative committee. That's it for correspondence. For the good of the city, anyone would like to come up, please come up to the mic. Keep it within a four minute span, please. Thank you, Alderman Massey. <clears throat> John Perino, Middletown School Board. Uh, Kevin Gomez, our lead representative, called me this evening. He said he's in New York City. He took his son to the 9 11 uh, memorial, so that's good for him. I just wanted to say a, a few things, and I wanted, first of all, to thank the mayor, uh, the council president, and the Chief of Police, Chief Iwanshu, Miguel Rodriguez, 
for the very professional way in which they handle the negotiations for the SROs uh, with the Board of Education. Uh, the contract was signed yesterday. I know I signed it. And I believe the SROs are on the job as of today. So uh, good for everybody who uh, participated and cooperated in that. Speaking about cooperation, the uh, lunch program with the playgrounds, the cooperative program between the Middletown Parks and Recreation, I see Chris is here, and uh, the school district is going very well from our end, and I believe from Chris's end too. Uh, Lauren uh, Burr, uh, Deputy Food Service Director, did an excellent uh, presentation on uh, Spectrum. Uh, explaining the program, explaining the preparations of food, uh, of food in our uh, central kitchen in our high school cafeteria. So we're very pleased on how that's going also. Uh, speaking about which, talking about the buildings, we not only have our SROs, but we're also hardening the building in other ways. Uh, we've authorized uh, film for the windows on the, uh, on the first floor of each building uh, so as to make it more difficult for an intruder to gain access to the uh, access to our buildings. Uh, the police cars in front of the building from Middletown Police Department, Town of Walker, we believe these will also be a, a great benefit in preventing intruders in our uh, district and our buildings. Uh, Finally, I uh, must thank uh, uh, former councilman and uh, now professional firefighter and county legislator, Joel, uh, Joel Sierra. He brought to our attention uh, that a, a traffic problem on Grand Avenue in front of Twin Towers, uh, when he was uh, uh, in his role as professional firefighter, the APRAS had a hard time getting down the street because of traffic. As a result, we've okayed an engineering study to see how that can be alleviated. So that's also in the work. So again, things are going well with the city, and in my view, and the view of the Board of Education. I hope this, and I know this will continue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perino. Anyone else <clears throat> like to address? Oh, please come up, young lady. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm here actually um, as one of the organizers that are doing the teaching um, symposium uh, for the current immigration crisis that we're facing. And the teaching is actually this Sunday, July 22nd, starting at 4 p.m. at the fifth at the St. Paul's United Methodist Church at 58 West Main Street. I wanted to come and just ensure that the city knows and its citizens knows that we're trying to gain citizens alliances in this teaching. We're gonna have several workshops talking about um, creating safe spaces for our fellow immigrants that are here. I know the city of Middletown has a huge um, Latino population. I don't know everyone's status, but I'm pretty sure there's a mix. And uh, we would like to try to educate through this teaching different topics of um, the legal rights that both <coughs> us as citizens have for immigrants and for immigrants that are here with us. Because um, at this point, the, the, the nature of the situation is even if you're a resident or even a naturalized citizen, you can also be at risk for scrutiny in regards to your status. So there's a lot of information that needs to be gone through. And this um, teaching is going to be from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. We're going to have... Um, keynote speakers from the city coming uh, and different, um, we'll have a representative from ACLU there and Unidos Local from New York City. So we, we are gonna have about 10 topics and you know just spread the word. Um, we are on Facebook as uh, Reunite Families Now, OCNY. And we also are on Eventbrite. It's a free event. We'll have snacks, we'll have a potluck afterwards. And just if there's any questions, you can reach out to me. My name is Lisette Izaguirre. I um, also have an art gallery, media studio here on North Street. And also uh, Pastor Charles is 
um, another organizer you guys can reach out to as well. And there's other organizers on Facebook if you want to reach out online. And that's, that's all. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else? Please state your name. Hi. Uh, Thank you. Adrian Timtrician, 78 Highland Avenue. So um, I feel like all this good news, I got to be the, the crank tonight. Um, I uh, wanted to call out to the uh, uh, committee's att uh, attention. Hold on one second. Young man. Thank you very much. My I'm son sorry. interrupting me. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. He's interested. He is. Um, anyway, uh, I'm here to speak about the, uh, the Second Baptist Church on North Street, and specifically there is a, uh, a revival group that meets there. Um, they've been there for at least the past three years. Um, I contacted the church. My understanding is the church rents the parking lot out to this group. Um, my complaint is they're annoying. They're loud. I live on 70 Highland Avenue. If I could levitate and fly south as the crow flies, I would land in that parking lot. Um, I don't want to be a crank, but uh, whoever is speaking on that loudspeaker is just comes across as very loud, annoying, very angry. And then the congregation, I'm assuming it's the congregation, they start blowing horns. And, you know, if it happened once in a blue moon, I'd be fine with that. Um, it's not an issue of outdoor music. Um, we were just discussing, we go, my son and I, we go downtown on Friday nights, we listen to the concert, sometimes uh, something sweet, great. But this particular group just gets on my nerves. And so, again, if I'm the only one in the city, I just came here to say my piece and that's it. But uh, I just wanted to bring that to the council's attention and, uh, you, know, you know, do with it as you will, I guess. So. Thank you. OK, thanks. Anyone else like to address the council? Okay, let's move on. Remarks of department heads. <clears throat> Economic development. Good evening. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, of course, you all heard about Race for Space. That's still continuing. The deadline is August 6th. We've had several inquiries. So things are moving, progressing uh, on that end. Um, tomorrow, we have a press conference uh, announcing the official announcement of run for downtown and all the events um, that will be taking place that day and that the press conference is tomorrow at 3.30 at the run for downtown park. Um, this weekend, a variety of events, Thursday and Friday night concerts. Saturday, we have the farmer's market, Christmas in July event, a retail uh, event going on with the merchants downtown and a youth summer concert also on Saturday. So there's a host of things to do this weekend. Hope to see everybody out. And uh, any information you need on Race for Space, city website, uh, middletown.com, city of Middletown, and then uh, middletownbid.org on events and so forth. That's all I have for tonight. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. DPW Commissioner. Good evening, all. Um, I'd like to update you about the Black Dirt uh, Sewer Project. Um, as you know, on Elm Street, um, the city and the Common Council and the mayor, we have opted to replace the water line in that uh, industry since the whole street is, uh, is being dug up and the uh, water line is poorly percolated and um, the sidewalks are in bad shape anyway due to the construction. So the health department called us on yesterday and the water line has been approved, the design to replace the water line. So we'll be negotiating with the contract about final price for the replacement of the water line. And hopefully you'll start seeing action again on Elm Street. So we apologize again for the inconvenience, but that's the situation we're in. And hopefully by the end of the day, you're going to have a brand new road on Elm Street and brand new sidewalks and brand new water line and sewer line. Uh, the milling in City Streets, our annual milling and paving operation, the milling has been concluded today. And Friday, we're going to start paving. Please review, uh, just uh, go to our website about an update which streets are going to be, uh, we're going to be starting with. Uh, on Friday, we're going to be starting on North Street. And then we'll continue with the other roads. Um, 
and that's, uh, there are many resolutions before you tonight. If you have any questions when the resolution comes up, I'll be happy to address them. If you have any questions for me. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah. Fire Chief. Good evening, everybody. Um, we just have, um, we're part of the um, capital budget. We have a couple items in there, and we also have a res resolution that we'll be sharing a cost uh, for a lawnmower to take care of our tower with departure and recs. And that's all I have for tonight. Any questions? Thank you very much. Treasurer. Good evening. Uh, there's a couple of large votes tonight, uh, one on, on, on the capital expenditure plan, and that's uh, $13,700,000, and that is exactly as it was presented in the, uh, in the capital uh, document that we circulated. No changes there. The debt is about $88,000 higher than in the plan that we circulated because when we, when we put it together, we, uh, we considered the cost of the fire truck and we omitted the, uh, the hook, the ladders, and whatever went with it. So the, the debt rose by $88,000. And I, I, I distributed a, a document to you. It's called Schedule E. And this is how we're going we're gonna to borrow $27 million this year. Now, $4,537,000 of it is the reloading of last year's bands. And since it was approved last year, it doesn't need approval this year. Then we're going to reload the 9.7 million to support the DRI uh, grant. The 12 million 864 is to cover this year's capex, and we're subtracting two numbers from that: the 557 and the 684. Because when we borrowed the, that money from the fund balance, we did the uh, uh, resolutions, so we don't have to pass them again. So what's going to pass tonight is the 11 623, and. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Any questions? Thank you. <clears throat> Superintendent of Recreation. Good evening. Just a couple of quick announcements for the public here. We have um, our tennis courts have been resurfaced. Uh, two of the courts have been resurfaced with not only the markings of tennis, but also pickleball. Uh, and those courts have been very popular, so I see the other two courts probably getting done as well. So it has a multi-use of tennis and pickleball. And if the tennis pickleball wars go from there, we're going to have to come up with plan B. <laughs> but it's great to see uh, um, another activity and a lot of people that usually don't use the courts using the courts. That, that, that's a wonderful thing. Um, Lowe's has a hero project, and they have selected the Middletown Recreation Department. And once our pools close, we're going to be giving our Maple Hill Pool House a makeover and it's compliments of Lowe's and their staff, and uh, they were contributing back to us because our department does well, does good things in the city, and I think they're looking at that lunch program that's been getting a lot of advertisement, so thank you to all the workers doing that as well as our school district. Um, the fire chief talked about the transfer. That's, again, two departments working together like we always do in this city to make good things happen and affordable for the taxpayers. Our Recreation Commission picnic is next Wednesday. You guys got invitations in your mailbox. That will be at the Lion Shelter at 6 o'clock, and you're welcome to come on, stop by, meet some of our full-time staff. The Walk Hills Engine Company number 6 will be recognized with the Distinguished Service Award this year for everything they do in the community, and Anna and Dave Madden are going to be given the Gold Award, and that's picked by uh, our Recreation Commission. Uh, this Saturday at Davidge Park, starting at 11 o'clock, is Cops and Kids Day, so that's something else to add to the busy weekend Maria was talking about. Uh, that event was wonderful last year with the police officers and the kids working together, basically in a color wars, so it's like a survivor game. Um, really something neat to look at. If you get a chance, stop by, and uh, you'll definitely leave with a smile on your face. Uh, we are introducing lacrosse to this town for younger kids. We're going to be running a free clinic. Uh, Tuesday the 24th, Wednesday the 25th, and Thursday the 26th at Monhegan Middle School in the evening. Um, it's free, but we want people to register, so we make sure we have enough instructors over there. And we're hoping that develops into an intramural league. And right now the enrollment is very high, so it's looking pretty good for that. Uh, Twilight Track and Field has started. Uh, we're getting great feedback. I'd like to thank Eric Hipsman, the varsity coach, and the varsity athletes who donate their time to that program over at the high school on Tuesday nights. 70, 80 kids there uh, exercising around positive role models, and it's just, it's just a plus. It's a wonderful thing to see. 
Um, the last thing is our after school programs do start in September. We are halfway through summer. We're at the halfway mark, believe it or not. And um, you want to register now for our after school programs and our three elementary schools. They are filling up fast. Uh, anybody in the public with questions on that, please call our office at 346 4180 and we'll be happy to help you with that. And lastly, our, our camps and our pools are busy, they're running wonderfully. And I said it last time and I want to say it again uh, thank you, thank you to the 100 seasonal workers out there that just do an incredible job with this very busy season and it doesn't go unnoticed. That's all I have. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, Alderman Kleiner? Uh, just quickly, what, what are the hours for Cops and Kids Day? Um, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay, yep. thank you. You're welcome. Any and other that, questions? That program is closed out, too. It's full. It meet the registration deadline. We have quite a lot of kids showing up. Very good. Any other? Thank you. <clears throat> Public hearings and grievances? Nothing this evening. Petitions and complaints. Nothing this evening. Speaking of complaints. Yeah, I have one complaint. <laughs> <laughs> Who's running the meeting? Um, the gentleman from 78 Highland Avenue, I did receive an email from him. I think I forwarded on to a few people. I did receive one more complaint, too. And the... Uh, the police department will be speaking with the Second Baptist Church, the property owners, and they will be stopping by there on Saturday. There may be one thing we have to correct in the law, and Alex is going to be reviewing that, and that is apparently churches may be exempt from certain types of noise. Um, for example, in our code, chimes and bells, and there are some other references. So. Uh, uh, we're, we're just assuming that they'll be cooperative. Uh, we've had the problem in the past with them, and um, but we, there there is no permit that is required or issued. So uh, uh, you know it is the same concern that we have with outdoor music, although we have no permit to yank in, in regards to this. But uh, but hopefully um, we're dealing with two entities: one Second Baptist Church, which is the property owner, and B the city also leases that property from the Second Baptist Church, so um, I'm assuming if there's not cooperation that we may have some leverage there. But uh, but we are looking into it. I met with uh, uh, Lieutenant Tholen and Graziano yesterday, uh, Chief Iwanchu who's out of town at training, and we're uh, definitely going to be speaking to them on Saturday. We'll have police in the area. The honking of the horns and all that is definitely a violation that can be ticketed, but uh, we're going to warn first and then follow up later. But I did get a second complaint. Um, good news on the Heritage Trail. I spoke with the regional director of the DEC today and they told me that by tomorrow they should be issuing the permit for the trail and that the, um, um, the city, you know, the county would then be able to proceed with the trail. The culvert project has been removed from the trail permit process and uh, we should be ready to go and then meet to uh, sign the IMA, uh, which is the intermunicipal agreement between the city and the county. I believe we have a, a meeting on Friday with the county. It might have been postponed to Monday. <coughs> um, there was some talk it may be postponed to Monday. But uh, once, the, uh, once the permit is issued, then we can execute the, uh, the IMA. Um, I was happy to see uh, Mr. Perino here from the school board. Uh, he's correct, the SRO lunch program. Um, is running beautifully. Um, it did get a lot of press and a lot of feedback, 90% of it positive and just a little f few knuckleheads that don't want kids to have a good breakfast and lunch. But uh, the program is something that we fully support and in cooperation with the school district and the recreation department. Um, it's been very effective. It um, has really uh, made a difference in some kids' lives throughout the summer months. <coughs> I wanted to spoke, uh, speak briefly on um, Alderman Johnson and his program that also received a lot of press this week, which is the uh, spay-neuter release of the um, uh, cats. And he's working with Robin Stewart, and that program is also a program funded by the city. Uh, I know Dr. Johnson donates a lot of his time to the program as a veterinarian also, so congratulations on a program well run, and um, I think it's... Um, we are seeing a reduction in some areas of the cat population, the feral cat population. Um, Don talked about the um, capital budget. 
and I'm sure some of the numbers are a little bit staggering to, <laughs> to all of you. Um, as you know, we are making major infrastructure improvements throughout the city. Uh, keep in mind that 9.7 million of that is a grant uh, of the DRI that, um, as you mentioned, uh, 4.5 million was money that was previously borrowed uh, on bond anticipation notes and then being rolled over. Um, but the, we're making some uh, major investments this year out of that 13 million or $12.8 million that you will be borrowing. Uh, fire department will be getting two new fire trucks um, and not including the one that's already in the, uh, in the borrowing. So basically three new fire trucks, that's over a $2 million expense. Um, one of the dams, uh, one of the lakes, the Shawanga Lake dams will be getting about $2.4 million of work that is required by the DEC. Um, so we, uh, uh, these, are, these are mandated programs. Um, the water filtration plant um, is receiving a $3 million uh, pump, uh, I think it's called a pump station, that's what, yeah, pump station. That was originally in the design. I know I don't like to harp back to, to old days, but that should have been done when the plant was built and it was removed for cost cutting purposes at the time. It was a much smaller cost back then and, and now we're dealing with it today, but, um, but w we need to do it. Um, the water uh, tanks, Mountain Avenue tank, uh, and I'm just trying to do this to give people a an idea of the cost of government even on a small scale like the city of Middletown. The Mountain Avenue water tank, it's a million gallon tank will have to be replaced at a cost of $2.5 million. That's a replacement of one of our water tanks. The other three tanks will be repaired, repainted, and um, restored, and that's at a cost of uh, well over $2 million for just those water tanks. One might ask why we're doing it all now, and that's a good question. And it'll bring you back to why we've made some of the decisions that we made over the past few years regarding water and sewer revenue. Um, Amy's Kitchen is going to be bringing in about seven to eight hundred thousand dollars a year. We hope projected once the project is up and running in 2019, 2020, 2021, whenever whenever it gets built. Uh, CPV will be bringing in about five to six hundred thousand dollars a year in revenue to the water and sewer departments. Also, um, and we're seeing some of those water revenue increases. So we're many of these projects are mandated projects. Some of them are not mandated. For example, the new water main coming down Monhagen Avenue that you will see soon. It's 20% funded by the state of New York. Um, it's about a $3 million project. And uh, we're you know, putting up five to $600,000 for this stage of the project. So you can see the cost and how it's gonna grow. We need more, we need new water lines down Lake Avenue. Um, and if you, follow what Mount Vernon has been going through uh, online or on the news. Uh, Mount Vernon ignored their problems for many, many years. Uh, we haven't ignored them. We've been doing them incrementally. Um, you know, we're doing the Black Dirt Sewer Line, which is about a $4 million cost. Uh, we did some work over on Cherry Street, which was significant cost. Sterling Street, significant cost. So a lot of infrastructure that people don't see has to be paid for. So just to give you an idea of why we decided at a point many years ago to become a wholesale, a wholesaler of water and sewer services because without the land to have additional rateables uh, or huge rateables, you need revenue to operate the city. So um, we also have um, planned it in a way uh, that over the next five years, there's gonna be a significant, deficit, uh, significant reduction in debt payments for other bonds that are being retired, whether they were 20 year old, three year old bonds. So that total number um, in the general fund is about uh, over the next five years will be over the next three or four years will be about $1.1 million. In the water fund over the next three to five years uh, will be over $2 million a year in debt payment reduction. And in the sewer fund will be about $155,000. So we have a plan, we have a plan to improve our infrastructure, we have a plan how to pay for it, and part of that plan was the wholesaling of water and sewer services, and um, 
I believe the plan is working. So you're going to see a lot of construction, a lot of work in and around the city, a lot of streets being dug up, a lot of planning, and all of it for the betterment of our community. So I think that's all I have for this evening. Um, unless you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to address them. Any questions, Alderman Kleiner? Uh, <clears throat> Mayor, would you just uh, explain about the, uh, we have the Monhagen Park expansion. Would you tell people what that is? Yes, the Monhagen Park expansion, as you know, um, the um, off of Monhagen Avenue, as you go out of town on the right side, um, it used to be just a, uh, a sunken area uh, that uh, we, we, we jokingly call it Rodriguez Park because my, Miguel was been advocating for probably even before he was an alderman for the city to do something with that property. And the numbers that we were given were staggering because it required a lot of fill and a lot of work and uh, uh, a lot of manpower. And we, we didn't have the money over the years. We, we cut a deal with the, um, the contractor as CPV, and we, um, Alderman Ram Kassoon and Alderman Johnson were kind enough to go door to door in their neighborhood to advise people in that neighborhood that there would be some equipment storage on that property for about a year. Um, that, but at the end of the, uh, the storage of the equipment, they would be very happy to know that the park will be, there will be a fence put up. Um, they, they would use the, fill the uh, property in bring it up to um, the required height. Uh, they would put topsoil, grade it, and, uh, and, uh, plant, and plant the grass. Uh, we then will adopt it as part of Davidge Park. It will be uh, the Heritage Trail would dissect it going right through. And um, so then we have this nice, big, beautiful field. What do we do with it? Um, we decided, we went to uh, Assemblywoman Gunther with a grant proposal. In this budget tonight, you'll see $350,000. Uh, $600,000 is the anticipated cost of the of what we're planning to do. And what it includes is a multi-use field with a five-lane track going around, uh, some bleachers, lighting, uh, parking area, and then access over to Davidge Park, walking access, not, via, not vehicular, vehicular access, over to Davidge Park. So it'll be about a 13 to 15 acre expansion of our park system. Uh, we're working with Chris and John Bianchi in the Parks Department to decide on what type of um, activities, obviously, that they'll be running up there. And, and um, uh, so there, there's an, a huge interest in people wa on walking tracks, obviously not me so much, but, or Andrew, we, although we should. <laughs> But, and Tom, I'm going to throw Tom in there, too. Oh, oh my God. God. Now, listen, listen, we got to have a little chubby guy thing up there. We're, we're <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll go on to the city parks and we'll take a little walk around and um, enjoy the facilities that are being offered by, um, by the city of Middletown. But the cost of the product that went in by the contractor was $207,000. That doesn't include manpower. So um, we anticipated that with the manpower, that was probably a five to $700,000 job just doing the work that was done there. So we're probably going to get about a million and a half dollar park for about $350,000. But it's a fantastic addition to the city, great addition to the third ward, um, and uh, taking an ugly vacant piece of property and, um, and, and making it part of our expanded park system. Thank so, you. Thanks. Alderman Johnson. Uh, well, two things. First of all, with respect <clears throat> to the park, uh, I was on my family vacation with all of my adult children, and uh, when I told them what was happening with that, because they looked at that empty lot for 20 years or so, and I also sent them pictures of the new tennis course at the high school, which are uh, breathtaking. If you haven't been back there, it looks it looks like a college campus back there. It's beautiful. Uh, but with respect to the water tower um, project, when uh, Mountain is done, I assume it's offline, and how does that affect the water supply to residents? Well, Jacob can address that, but the, uh, I, I think most of our tank system is used to pressurize the system, and he does bypasses, but uh, you, Jacob, you want to come up and address that? Thank you. I, I can't give you an engineering answer. This tank basically will be used, uh, will remain on operation, the steel tank, until the uh, concrete tank is constructed <coughs> right next to it. Oh, I see. So, so they will be not tandem be any for a while. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. It's going to be replaced. We're going to be purchasing property next to it. So there will not be any interruption. Okay. 
Thank you. Makes sense. But you should have asked the board about the other three tanks that are not being replaced, and how is that going to operate? What about the other three tanks? How is that? All right. going to operate? Jacob, can you come back up here? <laughs> The other uh, three tanks, Highland Avenue tank in there, it can work off the two million gallon water storage tank at the water treatment plant. So you're not going to have any compromised water pressure. Probably Vincent Drive area will have a slightly higher pressure. Uh, storage, we should have adequate storage until we, until we get the uh, tank back in line for Highland. For, um, uh, Rand, uh, for uh, Kennedy Terrace in there, there's a pump station in there, and we can also, like the mayor suggested, we can open and close certain valves in there. So we might be, there might be less pressure available for Randall Heights area, slightly less pressure, and we can boost it with some pumping operation. But again, the two million gallon will be on standby with this required storage. And um, uh, High Barney, we have installed in anticipation <coughs> of this work for High Barney tank. Uh, we installed, uh, there was an 18-inch water line that ran from the water treatment plant all the way down to intersection of County Route 78 and High Barney Road. Over there, we have solenoid-operated emergency cut-in valve, basically, and a pressure-reducing valve, which is when you take the la tank offline to service it, then we can have a valve in there that's automatically responding to the water demand in the system. And that will be coming from the 2 million gallon high-pressure tank as well. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate that. Oh, anytime. anytime. Good. Any, Any other, other questions, questions for the Mayor? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and uh, we're going to be doing that a lot of work. And if Don's <laughs> numbers are correct, I want to reemphasize this. These are Don's numbers about the bonds that are coming off. We can expect really a stable water and sewer fund for the next several years because of the uh, d decrease in spending the current bonds. Um, we're going to be on additional debt and additional revenue is going to play a significant role in the stability of our water and sewer, uh, which we know are in the top half of the countywide rates. But we're going to you're, we're going to see a stability in that fund. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Remarks from Alderman Alderman Burr. I'd just like to thank the Parks and Rec and the school district on supplying all the lunches. For the kids are well, well attended they use them every day it's healthy lunches and thanks for the kind words to my daughter from john thank you alderman jean francois yes uh, good evening thank you uh i know the mayor and uh commissioner dpw had mentioned that in the past we just uh letting our residents know please uh recycle it's it's a wonderful idea for the environment and it's a great idea for the city. So the more of us, the, the more we recycle, the better we be off. So please just remind everyone, please recycle. Thank you. Alderman Kleiner. Uh, thank you. Um, re recycling, the county has begun their electronics recycling program again. <laughs> so at the landfill, they will take TVs. There's a charge for TVs, but everything else you bring is free. And I notice at the recycling center there are a few TVs and remind people it is highly illegal to leave them there. You will pay a huge penalty if you are caught, so you're taking a real chance. Um, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, is um, Middletown Day at the Orange County Fair. So uh, if you have a Middletown ID, you get in free. So it be a good day to go to the fair. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I, I want to mention also um, <clears throat> that the e young lady mentioned the symposium that is going to be this Sunday from 4 to 7. There are a lot of people trying to really bring the community together, and it's going to be at St. Paul's Church. I know Pastor Charles has been working hard on this, um, a, a lot of local people. And they really want to try and get a discussion going and have people understand that immigration crisis didn't come out of nowhere. There's a long history, and it hopefully will help to understand the history, and, and people can share ideas, ideas and just try and come out and support the effort. There's a lot of work being done to try and make this happen very quickly. Um, <clears throat> On the, our, at our next council meeting, I have a communications committee meeting. Uh, 
that'll be at, I believe, at 7 o'clock, because there's a CDA meeting at 7.30. That's on August 6th, because we're moving that meeting to Monday, because night out will be Tuesday, so August 6th. <coughs> And we will be talking about the uh, city ID card. We're looking at the legislation that Poughkeepsie passed. They did a lot of work with the people who wrote the manuals and worked really hard to get it uh, absolute best practices and gold standards. So we're working with them and, and uh, I hope we'll all be prepared for, for that discussion. And um, I guess that's it. Thank you. Alderwoman Ram Consume. Good evening. Um, I just, if everyone has already noticed, there are a number of resolutions uh, tonight regarding the night out against crime. Uh, I appreciate everyone's support for those, especially as one relates to our Cap Off Fireworks show. Again, this year we are able to bring on a fireworks sponsor, so a big thank you to Boyce Excavating for that as well. Um, we are looking at an outstanding evening. Our local business community is who we have to thank for making this happen every year. It's a strictly donations funded event. Um, it is on Tuesday, August 7th at Davidge Park from 5 p.m. to 9.30. And we have the best police department around. So when it's time for a police community event like this, ours is obviously the best. So you definitely want to come down. We're going to have a great night. Lots to do, lots to give away, music, fun, dancing, fireworks. What more could you ask for? So please come down. And uh, at our next meeting, I'll definitely have my final list of uh, sponsors. And I just want to, I'll give a give, big thank you to all of them. So my thanks to you. Have a good night. Alderman Johnson. Thank you. I want to uh, thank Alderwoman Ram Kassoon. Um, she makes a tough job look easy. And it's uh, several years in a row. It is a great event, and the new venues turned out to be really good. So congratulations again for your hard work. Uh, just to reiterate with the mayor, the Dumb Stray program, um, I probably see Ms. Stewart uh, every day about something. Um, she has a lot of foster families that help her with kittens, and she does a lot of placement of these cats that not all return to their colonies. But she's literally a one-woman band. Um, she's tireless. Um, she maintains all of these colonies and enumerates all the cats. And it has made a difference in the quality of life as far as the number of cats we see in our community. And uh, I want to thank her and congratulate her for her good work. Thank you. Alderman Green. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> gee, after the jab, I don't know if I should say this, but uh, congratulations, the holy dog. <laughs> you know, it's always really nice to see a, a, local, uh, a local business get national attention. Um, I certainly have been there maybe too many times if that's such a thing uh but i will say i was happy to see today about the uh the fact that the tennis courts were nicely finished everything looks beautiful um and i have played pickleball in the past if anyone doesn't know what that is it's kind of like a life-size version of ping pong i mean is how i'd really put it and it's quite fun so uh, i'm sure you will be we will be uh, looking at the other two courts as well because it's very popular and uh, it's good exercise, so I guess I'll be uh, taking advantage of that. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I've just got two quick things. Uh, one, Jerry, uh, I was in contact with the executive director of Nobody Leaves Mid Hudson uh, for fear of the uh, FOIL request, and I have some information from him that he sent me. I uh, gave it to the uh, Corporation Council, and I'll give you a copy of it. And tomorrow at the Kiwanis meeting, uh, older woman Ram Consoon is the guest speaker speaking uh, about night out against crime so if anyone happens to be in the area of Tony's restaurant around 1215 uh, Kate is the guest speaker speaking about Middletown and all that uh, she's done for it okay unfinished business nothing this evening new business we have a resolution sponsored by older woman Ram Consoon second by Alderman Burr Resolution to accept a total of $2,250 in donations for the night out against crime. Resolution sponsored by <coughs> Alderman Rankin-Soon, seconded by Alderman Burr. Any questions? Roll. Rankin-Soon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. <laughs> Johnson. Aye. Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Resolution to appoint Alex Smith as Corporation Counsel to fill the term of Richard Girton, term to expire on December 31st, 2020. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, second by, by Alderman Johnson. Any questions? Roll. 
Ma'am Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderwoman Ram Kassoon, second by Alderman Green. Resolution to move the Common Council meeting on Tuesday, August 7th to August, Monday, August 6th, not to coincide with the night out against crime. Resolution sponsored by Alderwoman Ram Kassoon, second by Alderman Green. Any questions? Roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution sponsored. Uh, carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Ju June Francois. Resolution to approve the 2018 capital budget plan for the amount of $13,719,402 and to establish lines in the budget for the projects. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman June Francois. Any comments? Roll. Ampersoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burt. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, seconded by Alderman Green. Resolution to authorize a payroll increase of 2% for the Executive Administrator of Civil Service, retroactive to January 1st, 2018. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, seconded by Alderman Green. <laughs> Roll. Ampersoon. Aye. <laughs> Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. I abstain. <laughs> Thank you, by the way. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Alderwoman Rand Kassoon. Resolution to extend the taxi cab license period from one year to a two year period. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderwoman Rand Kassoon. Any questions? Roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderwoman Ram Kassoon. Resolution to authorize fireworks display for night out against crime provided by Young's Explosives, along with authorizing the mayor to sign all documents for the fireworks display. <clears throat> Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderwoman Ram Kassoon. Any questions, comments? Roll. Ramp Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Resolution to approve a transfer in the amount of $434,200 for maintaining the wastewater treatment plant. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Questions, comments? Roll. Ramp Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Resolution to authorize the Treasurer to transfer $6,600 within the 2018 budget for the Fire Department and Parks share the cost of a long tractor. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Questions, comments? Roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. You need a moment? No. Okay. We're good, thanks. Thank you. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoon, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Resolution authorizing the issuance of $246,400 serial bonds of the City of Middletown, Orange County, New York, to pay the cost of the purchase of vehicles for said city. Resolution sponsored by Alderwoman Ram Kassoon, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Comments, questions, roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. <clears throat> Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Jean Francois. Resolution authorizing the issuance of $74,500 serial bonds of the City of Middletown to pay the cost of the purchase of equipment for the Parks and Rec Department in and for said city. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, second by Alderman Jean-Francois. Questions, comments, roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean-Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. 
resolution authorizing the issuance of $98,500 $98, serial bond of the city of Middletown to pay the cost of improvements at playgrounds in and for said city. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Comments, questions, roll. Ma'am Kasum. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jude Jean Francois, seconded by Alderman Green. Resolution authorizing the issuance of a hundred fifty thousand dollars serial bond of the city of Middletown to pay for the cost of improvements to sidewalks on Midland Avenue in and for said city. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois, seconded by Alderman Green. Comments, questions, roll. Ma'am Kasum. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Alderwoman Ram Kasum. Resolution authorizing issuance of one million two hundred fifty thousand dollars serial bond to pay the cost of the purchase of real property for watershed expansion <coughs> in and for said city. <coughs> Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderwoman Ram Kinsoon. Comments, questions, roll. Ram Kinsoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, seconded by Alderman Ju Jean, Jean Francois. Issuance of three million serial bond to pay the cost of improvements to the high lift pump station at the water treatment plant in and for said city. Did you skip one? Mm -hmm. Did you skip one? Which one? Two million one fifty. Did I guess one? Where's the saddle water? Two million one hundred and fifty. <coughs> Two million one hundred and fifty. The water tanks. Okay. For the water tanks and I believe that was skipped. In our order we have this is what we have in order. Okay. Unless I misunderstood what you said. Let's get ready. Let's get ready. Just read it again. Okay. It's my fault. I'm sorry. Resolution sponsored by yeah. Alderman Green. Green, seconded by Alderman Jude Jean Francois. Issuance of two million one hundred fifty thousand dollars serial bonds to pay the cost of improvements to various water tanks in and for said city. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, second by Alderman Jean Francois. Comments, questions, roll. Ram Kasum. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Passes. Resolution passes. Let me see this one. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, seconded by Alderwoman Ram Kassoon. The issuance of three million serial bonds to pay the cost of improvements to the high lift pump station at the water treatment plant. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, seconded by Alderwoman Ram Kassoon. Questions, comments, roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois. <coughs> Burr. Resolution authorizing the issuance of 600,000 serial bonds to pay the cost of the construction of the roundabout at County Route 108 78 intersection. Skipped again. <coughs> we might be out of order. It's a different order, apparently. Yeah, you skipped one. Alrighty. But that doesn't matter. We'll do this one and we'll go back to it. Okay. Although the. Uh, we'll do the resolution. No, go back. Two million four. And go up to the two point four. All righty. Resolution Next. sponsored by Alderman Jude Jane Francois, seconded by Alderman Burr. Resolution to authorizing the issuance of two million four hundred dollars serial bonds to pay the cost of upgrades to the Schwangagun Dam in and for said city. Resolution by Alderman Jean Francois, second by Alderman Burr. Comments, questions, roll. Ram Kasum. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. 600,000. Right here. That's it. Okay. Okay. 
Resolution sponsored by Alderwoman Ram Kassoon, seconded by Alderman Green. Resolution to the, authorizing the issuance of 600,000 serial bonds to pay the cost of the construction of the roundabout at County Route 108 78 intersection in and for said city. <coughs> Resolution sponsored by Alderwoman Ram Kassoon, seconded by Alderman Green. Comments, questions, roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, seconded by Alderman Burr. Resolution authorizing the issuance of $54,000 serial bonds to pay the cost of engineering expenses in connection with culvert upgrades in and for said city. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, seconded by Alderman Burr. Questions, comments, roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passed. Couple more, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Take right. your time. Take your time. Right. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoon, seconded by Alderman Green. Resolution concurring with the Board of Estimate to trans transfer 13000 from the general fund to DPW contractual for underground storage tanks, closure via removal. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoon, seconded by Alderman Green. Comments, questions, roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Resolution declaring the attached list of portable radios as surplus as they are in disrepair obsolete and sell them to all season distribution for $1,040. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Comments, questions, roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Green. Resolution authorizing the Treasurer to transfer $24,660 to cover repairs for sludge collection system at the water treatment plant. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Green. Comments, questions, roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Jude and Francois. Issuance of $350,000 serial bonds of the City of Middletown to pay part of the cost of the improvements expansion of Monhagen Park for said city. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Jean Francois. Comments, questions, roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderwoman Ram Kassoon, authorizing the issuance of $2,500,000 serial bonds to pay the cost of the replacement of the Mountain Avenue water tank in and for said city. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderwoman Ram Kassoon. Comments, questions, roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. In Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. That's it for our resolutions. Thank you, Karen. Take a breath. <laughs> Local laws. <laughs> Nothing this evening. Audit. Mr. Chairman, I move the accounts be audited, the claims be adjusted, and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrants for their payment. Resolution by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Burr. All in favor. A roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Resolution passes. Motion for adjournment. No moved. No moved.